Well, scientists take exception to your language because you say trees can talk, and they just say, no, no, we think that's communication. Yeah. But you're very careful about using that word talk. Yeah, um, I think um, I have to talk in, in expressions which we all understand because to, to be uh, careful enough, you have to talk in tree language. Okay, so if I should talk in human language, I, I need uh, human expressions. And uh, the book is something like a guided tour through the forest. And I make guided tours th since uh, 25 years. And the audience told me by uh, looking bored uh, when, when I uh, explained it too scientifically. And so I, I thought, for, uh, I, I'm, I searched for expressions which uh, gave a picture, an instant picture. And therefore, for example, I say mother trees suckle their children and not uh, explaining the biochemical reaction. We could do that also on, on uh, human uh, suckling, mm -hmm. and we can uh, explain human language also as the, the um, um, s uh, producing of sound waves and, that, and uh, bringing the sound waves on monitors, and therefore you, you wouldn't have an expression how wonderful language can be. And um, so far, I read a recent uh, scientific paper that on oak trees they had uh, discovered more than 600 words in chemical language. So chemical language, uh, that sounds to be something stupid, but it's, it's, it's a wonderful language. So but tell us how that works. Uh, for example, in um, Africa that was discovered in the 1970s that acacia trees uh, warn each other when they uh, get uh, attacked by giraffes and they pump uh, instantly poison in their leaves, and they warn their surrounding companions by um, um, gassing out, uh, I, don't, I think it's a special um, tannin. And um, uh, the giraffes knows that. They are um, feeding on acacia trees just against the wind direction. And uh, there are some animals which, which are perhaps a little bit more stupid, some months ago, a completely kudu herd uh, died because they didn't uh, realize that the acacia trees have been warned sur um, surrounding the attack trees and they uh, were poisoned by the poisoned leaves. So if the trees are pumping out gas, can they also smell? They can, they can smell um, because otherwise that does, wouldn't work and they even can taste. For example, elm trees are able to taste when they are being attacked by a certain uh, sort of caterpillar. They can taste the saliva, and then they call the uh, special predators of these caterpillars. And the predators that are little wasps, they know uh, instantly, ah, that is this sort of caterpillar in, in a, a, a certain amount that's worth uh, to fly to that elm tree. And then they lay their eggs in the little caterpillars, and then they're the, they're the, the worms eat them from the inner side up. That's not very nice, but uh, uh, this way the elm tree gets rid of the caterpillars. Mm -hmm. Now they're all connected in what you call the wood wide web. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not uh, an expression from me. That's uh, also very uh, old research from the 1990s. Um, the magazine Nature called it uh, wood wide web in, the, in 1995. That's um, working with fungi filaments. Um, in one teaspoon full of uh, um, forest earth, you find more than a mile of fungi filaments. And through the filaments, there are news being transported, like in our uh, uh, um, World Wide Web. Uh, they are transported uh, on chemical and electrical ways, and for example, they warn each other from insect attacks. When one tree is attacked, you know the thing with the wind is not working always properly, so uh, they're, they're using the wood wide web, and so every tree gets a warning and can prepare in advance. And so you can measure that, that, that takes time. Trees are very slow. That's uh, the main problem between humans and trees. Trees are so slow, and we regard them very often as something like a, a little bit more than a stone. The electrical signal within trees travel uh, at maximum speed of uh, one centimeter per second, and that's the reason why scientists detected that so lately, because uh, they, they uh, heard a tree, and they measured, and okay, there's no signal, so trees are not able to, to have electrical signals, but you have to take time. You have to take minutes or hours uh, to measure a reaction, and therefore, if here are any tree huggers, take your time if you expect a response. <laughs> <laughs> uh, trees hug each other. They have friends. They are yeah. relations. That's also something from forestry. We are used to, to uh, get taught that the trees need space to develop and to grow fast, but trees don't, as you know now, don't want to grow fast. They want to have companions. They want to live in social bands, they support each other. They uh, grow together with the roots, and if uh, there's a weak tree, 
uh, it gets supported by, uh, uh, by the other trees and they pump sugar solution to this weak tree. And there's research being done from the University of Aachen and they found out that the rate of photosynthesis uh, is in the leaves of an intact forest. Uh, totally equal between the trees. And when you thin a forest, when you fell many trees, you destroy the social bands and then the trees become egoist. And then you have strong trees and weak trees and some trees die. And, uh, but foresters think, yeah, that's a healthy forest. But in, in reality, that's an egoistic uh, collection of single trees. Mm, but some trees don't get on. Uh, oaks and beeches, for instance. Yeah, but uh, yeah, um, some people th think, ah, okay, trees are res resistic. No, um, that are totally different species. Like more, they are uh, more uh, far away at an evolutionary scene than we and goldfish, for example. So, uh, if you don't have goldfish in your family, uh, <laughs> so uh, it's no wonder that beech trees don't have oaks in their family. They they don't like them. They they defeat them by growing with the roots under the roots of oaks, they pump the water out, the nu nutrition out, they uh, um, grow with their branches through the ground of the oak and switch the light off, and so the, the oak gets hunger and dies, and the dying of a tree, a tree is very slow, as you know, uh, that lasts uh, 10 years or so, and then the, the, you can, in this period, you can see that the oak panics. It gets uh, something, it, it's a technical term, um, it's called fear branches. That are thin branches like, like uh, a brush, and uh, that's a reaction uh, that doesn't make any sense because uh, when it's the, this branches branches will be built down the stem where there is le even less light, and that these branches die because there is no light. That's absolutely nonsense. Sense, but a tree also makes nonsense when it's panics like we do. Uh, like most good books, yours has got a, a, a great big dollop of sex in it. Tell us about <laughs> arboreal relations. Okay, trees are very slow in sex, as you know. <laughs> they, they arrange. Uh, that's, that's, I, I'm just telling you facts. <laughs> uh, they arrange, and when they, when they date, um, they arrange it uh, one and a half year in advance. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> that's maximum speed. <laughs> and um, they, they do it because um, they want to get rid of uh, big, big um, mammals that feed on acorns or uh, beech nuts. And um, therefore, they just bloom every uh, three to five years uh, because the population uh, will go up uh, when there's a lot of uh, beech nuts uh, production. And the next year, if, if they would bloom every year, there will be hundreds of thousands of deers and wild boars and feed up all the, the beech nuts and acorns. And therefore, they, they make a rest, they make a break for three to five years. And there, the whole population of big mammals break down and then they arrange to bloom again. And they arrange over hundreds of kilometers. And I, um, I think half a year ago, I, I read a, a scientific report with many explanations and uh, with the last sentence, but we don't know really. <laughs> so it's, it's not proven how it works, but we know that it works. Mm.